So, Matt, when you talk about 13 scholarship offensive linemen or 13 on the roster, and then you talk about uh, eight that are healthy enough to be in the rotation, well, uh, most teams have, of course, the five starters, but they want two to three guys that are reliable, dependable. You can play them against anyone, the best competition, and, and you're not just, uh, you know, creating a leak in the offensive front. But it sounds like for USC, unless things change, um, <laughs> Their, their rotation isn't necessarily going to be based on value or quality or winning those positions as it is just, well, who who's an able-bodied person that can be here to, to, to put into this rotation, and that's not a good place to be. It isn't a good place to be, and this is why you know hitting the portal after spring practice has been a constant point of emphasis. Like Lincoln Riley has made no secret of this, that you're going to see significant – uh, you know, just just numerically, not even in terms of I mean, obviously, you're assuming that you're going to get quality, but like he does need quantity in addition to quality uh, on the offensive line, also on the defensive line. But, yeah, strictly in relationship to the offensive line, you're going to see several incoming transfers after spring ball to get those numbers up. Uh, I also mentioned and you also referenced it, too. Uh, only eight of the 13 scholarship offensive linemen are able-bodied at this time. So like one of the not yet able-bodied players is Bobby Haskins, a transfer from Virginia. He's He is expected to be a starter at tackle, um, but he's not healthy yet. So he hasn't been involved in spring practice. So like that's a guy that USC is counting on, but he hasn't been able to participate in the spring. So yeah, in terms of like the, the starting positions, they, they're they're occupied mostly by returning players from last year. And that's it's mostly, though, a product of attrition and, and just the limited number of options that USC has at this point. So uh, what I mentioned earlier with Josh Connerly, it's going to be interesting to see what the offensive line is going to look like in like week four when USC gets into Pac-12 play compared to week one. How much change are we going to see in those three weeks? Because you will have August camp. You'll have three weeks of non-conference games uh, you know, in, in the early part of the schedule in September. How much change is there going to be from week one to week four? That's a question that's going to be definitely worth monitoring as we follow the progress of USC as a whole and also this offensive line. So you have uh, Brett Nealon at center, Andrew Voorhees at left guard, and uh, other returning players, Cortland Ford currently at left tackle, Jonah Monheim at right tackle, and Justin Dietrich at right guard. So all returning players from last year. But again, as you said, this is in many ways a product of, you know, there aren't too many options at this point. You're in spring ball. Bobby Haskins not able to even uh, partake in spring practice. Josh Connerly, you know, won't be able to get involved in USC practices until the summer camp in August. Uh, so you have all these restraints currently on the USC offensive line room. Also of note, uh, in addition to the Haskins uh, signing, if you look at though the recruiting class for 2022, it's an only, only a class of eight and no offensive linemen in the 2022 class. 